Okay, guys, so welcome to UCLA School of Dentistry. First of all, congratulations on getting accepted to one of the top dental schools in the country. So excited for you. Yay. So today we're going to be um, presenting on just a little bit of like introductory information. Um, Alexa and I are co-chairs of UCLA as the pre-dental outreach. And um, today we're going to kind of let our committee take over and give you some information. So go ahead and introduce yourselves. I guess we can go just down the line. Um, hi, I'm Jackie. I am from Santa Rosa, California. So that's in Northern California. And I went to UC San Diego and graduated in 2017. Hi everyone, my name is Ethan. Um, I also graduated from UC San Diego, uh, class of 2020. And I'm originally from LA. All right. Hi everybody, I'm Brad Movek, I'm a D1. Um, I graduated in 2020 from Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York, um, but I am from Los Angeles, I'm from the Valley actually. If you guys know where Granada Hills is, that's where I'm from. Okay, Elisa is not here today, so I guess I'll go next. Hi everybody, my name is Melody. I am from Irvine, California. I went to UC Irvine and I graduated in 2019. And then, hey everyone, my name is Alex Rivera. Um, I graduated from Cal State Long Beach in 2018. Um, and I'm also from Los Angeles County, Lakewood, Lakewood um, area, if anyone knows where that's at. And I think I said, but I'm Elizabeth. Um, I graduated from UOP in 2019 and I'm originally from Sacramento area. And hey guys, I'm Alexa. I graduated from University of Arizona in 2013 and um, originally from Arizona area where I am now. And uh, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll get to them at the end. Okay, do you want to take over? Okay, so I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about housing and specifically on campus housing. So uh, we have a few different housing options at UCLA. The most popular one is definitely Weyburn Terrace and also Hillgard. So Hillgard is all studios. Weyburn Terrace, you have options between um, studios and then like a two bedroom and a two bedroom townhouse. Um, so some pros to living on campus is that it's close. So it's within walking distance. I live in Weyburn Terrace uh, right now, and it takes me about 15 minutes to walk to campus. So that's super convenient, especially like now that we're in lab a lot more. Um, also, you get to live with other graduate students. So literally the whole community is just graduate students. So it's nice to kind of have that like space um, to talk to people who are kind of like-minded and are focused on the same thing. And then also it's furnished. So you don't have to worry about getting furniture, bringing in your own stuff from home. Um, you don't like, that's all included. And then the cost of cable and like utilities are all included in the rent. So that's always a pro. And if you have a roommate, uh, you each have separate leases. So if something happens and like one of you guys wants to leave and the other one wants to stay, you're not like liable for each other. So um, that can be a perk as well. And so the cons would be that parking is not included. Right now I pay probably about like 300 something for the quarter for a parking permit. And with that permit, like you can't park on campus like close to campus, you have to park in like the Weyburn Terrace structures, except you can park after 4.30 PM and then on the weekends, <laughs> but, um, and then you have like less freedom because we do have RAs. So like, you know, do that what you will. And it is like, they are older buildings. So obviously everything's gonna be like less modern um, and maybe less like visually appealing if that's what you're going for and our amenities are limited. So we have study rooms and um, we also have barbecue grills, but if you're looking for like a pool or like a spa, gym, stuff like that, like we don't have that. <laughs> uh, Dustin, <laughs> which building is better for parties? <laughs> I don't know, any building is fun, you know? 
Okay. And then I remember when I was incoming, like trying to choose housing was really difficult for me just because like, it was hard to go off of the photos that there were online. Just, it's hard to see like what something would look like. So I did include um, a little video of what my townhouse looks like. Um, and please keep in mind that this is move-in week. So everything is a little bit, just we're not settled yet. Um, but so this is like the kitchen living area is all downstairs as you can see. And once you, it turns, <laughs> we're gonna go upstairs and then upstairs is gonna be like where the bedrooms and the bathrooms are. Um, but yeah, so that's our kitchen and then our little like family room area down there. Can you choose your roommate? So you can, um, but you each have to have the same housing offer given to you. So if you wanted to live in a townhouse, you each have to have a townhouse offer in order to like match. Um, it can't be like one of you has a studio offer and then one of you has like a two bedroom, like you won't match that way. Usually though, I'd say they're pretty good at um, like pairing you up with people that you want to room with. Um, can you apply and decline your offer later? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, I think what happens <laughs> is you apply and then you get offered some sort of like either townhouse or one bedroom and then you can either accept it or decline mm -hmm. and then sorry if you could go back like two more slides <laughs> that would be amazing okay and then i did want to point out um like i know it's really small but the average cost of rent is like around 1400 a person um and then depending on like if you're in a studio or townhouse regular two bed two bath like prices kind of vary but it's about 1400 um, and then I also do want to note that if you guys are like married or have children or whatever, there is family housing, like that is an option available to you. I don't know much about it, but I know that Alexa and Alex are both in family housing. So I don't know if you guys want to like talk a little bit about that, or if you guys have questions, you can direct it to them. Yeah, I'll just say a quick thing about family housing. It's off campus, so it's 10 minutes south of campus. And um, it's like a big village. They call it University Village. And there's um, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and I think three bedrooms available. Um, so you just apply just like that online through uh, my UCLA. And you get an offer. And it's kind of the same process. Um, so yeah. Uh, email or uh, write in the chat if you have any questions about that. And then I'm in a studio in Paseo. It's a little more update. It's in Weyburn, but the building's newer compared to the rest of Weyburn. Um, if anyone has any studio questions, let me know. I think, wait, sorry, I'm just looking in the chat right now and they're asking when are housing apps released? If I remember correctly, I think they already are. Yeah. Like, I think that they released them in March sometime and you could fill it out and then they don't really let you know what housing offer you got until like June or something. Yeah, I think it comes in as an email, right? Like you get the notification to apply through email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know for me, like the, the application just opened up like um, like two weeks ago. So, because I might be moving on campus. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so, so I mean, I it was recent though. Like, I think Noemi should have, like, Noemi, you guys know Noemi Benitez, right? Like, she's been sending you a lot of emails. Um, she should have sent an email out about it to you guys um, like a couple weeks ago, or if not, she will be very soon. But yeah. All right. Um, should I talk about on campus now, or, or Elizabeth, what's up? Yeah, um, I was just gonna say for the sake of time, we can keep going with the presentation. If you wanna keep answering the questions in the chat, go ahead and do so. If not, we'll answer them at the end. All right, perfect, yes. Um, okay, hi everybody. So I'm here to talk to you about off campus cause I live off campus. So, um, you know, off campus, it's like, you know, it's like you're living in your own castle, okay? 
it's great you know and like like you see this castle you got your moat you got the cows and you know it's like that's a sign it's like it's like when you live in your own apartment like there's a lot of opportunity to like customize you know if i wanted a moat i can build myself a moat if i wanted some cows i can have a cow metaphorically speaking right so um so like that stuff like that and i remember when i first moved into my apartment i was like schmidt here in new girl have you guys seen new girl it's a great show i was like that guy i was like yeah i got my freedom back it's like i got back from college and i lived with my parents but now i'm back out i got my freedom i was so excited so um, that was a good time so um, I actually live right next to um, the, um, the family housing that Alexa and uh, Alex were talking about. So, uh, but it's, uh, it's not affiliated with, U with UCLA. And um, I pay a, a pretty reduced price rent and I'm, I'm, it makes me very happy. I'm saving a good amount of money. Um, but yeah, so I live right there. So it's basically, it's a 10 minute drive uh, to campus. So it's pretty, it's pretty nice. And um, you know, I, I live with uh, about three other people as well. I have my own room and um, I also got my own parking spot. And uh, I overall love it, but so I'm going to talk to you guys about the pros and cons to that, though. Okay, because you know while there's good things, there's also some downsides sometimes, right? So some pros, you know, it most likely will be more low cost depending on where you commute from. Um, so you know, like if you live, if you're commuting like right in Westwood area, like really close to UCLA, um, it might be hard to find a cheaper price than Weyburn, um, but it's possible you might get the exact same price as Weyburn depending on where you where you live. Um, but, you know, that, that depends if you want to like be walking distance or not. Um, another thing too is, um, you know, you get more independence when you live off campus. You know, you, we don't really have any RAs or anything like that. Um, so, you know, it's, you get to really do whatever you really want to do, I guess. Um, in my opinion, I think uh, oftentimes it's a lot nicer depending on the place you choose. You know, you can go on apartments.com, right? And go check them out. Look at the pictures. I don't have a video of my apartment, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you, you can look it up online, all, the, all, the, all sorts of different ones. And um, oftentimes parking spots are actually included. In, um, and sometimes you might even get a garage. I don't have a garage though. It'd be really cool though if I did. Um, but you know, as I said, there's cons as well. So um, oftentimes you most likely won't be walking distance to campus. And I will I will admit sometimes, like when I have to spend a lot of time in lab, it's like, how do I gotta get up, get ready and drive over to campus then from the parking, uh, parking area, then walk over to campus and then drive back. It's a whole process. Um, so sometimes that gets a little annoying. Um, also initially it was a little challenging to meet people. So uh, I know like during the first, like, so like when you live in Weyburn and you know, you're doing COVID friendly activities, uh, you know, you, you oftentimes meet people a lot quicker than people that live off campus. So um, for me, like, I mean, it wasn't uh, a long time that it took me to meet people. Like maybe like two weeks is like when I kind of was at pace with everybody else, but um, just know that initially it is a challenge and I want to be upfront about that, but it's okay. Uh, another thing is that you got to furnish it yourself. Um, that's part of building your kingdom, right? You get to choose that couch, choose that TV, choose that um, nightstand, whatever, choose your desk, choose that chair. Um, so that, that's, that's a con, but it could be a benefit. Also, um, if, you, if you have a family that lives fairly, like a, a pretty easy drive to campus, you might even want to live there. Um, you can save a lot of money that way. Oh, next slide, please. All right. So there's this thing you guys called the D1 dental kit. And we just wanna make sure we're letting you know about this now. Cause I know when it came, when orientation week came, they just kind of like said, hey guys, you got a D1 kit and um, it's gonna cost this much. And we were like, whoa, how do we pay for this? We had so many questions, okay. Um, we wanna be upfront about, with you guys about this. So um, first of all, what is this D1 kit? You know, your D1 kit, it's got um, your lab coats, your scrubs, your all your, materials that you need to, um, in order to, you know, train to become a dentist, right? You know, like your plaster mixing bowl, your awesome hand piece that you shouldn't drop or break because it's expensive. Uh, all, all those things. Okay. It's a really, it's really cool. So what's going to happen is, um, is, you know, you're going to, um, so yeah, yeah. So I'm going to, so uh, Nicolette, I will answer that question in just a moment um, through, through this slide. So um, <clears throat> basically you're going to show up. It's one of the days during orientation week is orient uh, is discovery day, right? But first, what they're going to do is they're going to like pull you in a room and you're going to have a credit card ready. OK, and that's going to either it needs to have, be, have a pretty good limit. Um, and so you have two options. You can pay the whole price up front or you can do a payment plan. So if you pay it all up front, um, the initial cost and all you have to pay would be fourteen thousand five hundred seventy six dollars. But remember, that's covering all your materials that you're going to be using for like the first year and into your second year and maybe even when you're practicing in the clinic. Um, but, you know, if you have the money to do that, go for it. If not. I did not have the money. I worked at Jersey Mike's. I was making subs. I did not have 15 grand going for me, but that's okay. Cause you know, um, that's part of the loans that they give you, right? So you can do a payment plan. So you can put, um, what they'll have you do is they'll have you put 20% down 
and then $1,333 monthly for nine months. And um, yeah, it ends up accruing interest, right? So, but it's only like an extra $300 and that's just, it's an option. And yes, to answer the question, it is in the projected cost area. Like if you go online and look, look that up on the website, it is in the projected cost area labeled under books, supplies, and instruments. And they actually a lot, um, well, they recommend that you take $21,000 um, for that. And so that 15,000 would therefore be um, um, included in that price. And that is um, part of the loans that you get um, for going to UCLA. So it's, it's, it's not like an, uh, uh, like an extra fee that you have to kind of like find your own loan for and stuff. No, it's, it's part of like the, um, the, the aid process. And um, in the leftover, you have about like seven grand from that book, Supplies and Instruments, to where you know you can buy tea for teeth, loops, um, other things. And maybe you want to buy a new laptop, gaming computer, if you like to game, I guess. Um, just stuff like that. And then also there's a D2 kit as well, but it's uh, much more low cost. But you, you won't have to worry about that until your D2 year. Yeah, so to clarify, um, this is not included in like the tuition part of the projected cost, but it is like under books and supplies and instruments. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, sorry if that wasn't for everybody. No, you're good. Um, yeah. Um, so here's just an example of like what the payment plan like looks like. Just if you guys want to take a quick picture of that, that's cool. This is mine. I got two more payments left. Let's go. Um, so uh, just uh, that's that's what it looks like. I recommend like keeping track of it like with your receipts and maybe a check mark. Um, but yeah, so you can just take a picture if you want to like kind of use this to like maybe plan for the next coming coming months. All right, guys, now to talk about everyone's favorite topic, financial aid. Um, I'm sure many of you guys have a lot of questions in regards to, you know, dental school cost, and it can seem overwhelming, um, but rest assured, you know, financial aid works out in the end. Um, and I just kind of listed out some of the few steps um, that maybe you guys should have already taken some of the first ones, which is applying for FAFSA um, through the um, government website. Um, and I do have like some asterisks beneath that. Um, I know a lot of people have questions like, should I still be submitting my parents' information um, now that I'm living on my own? Um, and the only thing um, about that is if you, um, if you choose to not apply with your parents' information, um, you do kind of lose out on some of the all university low interest um, loans and some of the grants that you could qualify for. So one of the ones um, is the dentistry grant, which is need-based um, and you can only qualify for that um, if you've submitted your parents' information through your FAFSA. Um, and then there's another um, loan that's offered through um, UCLA um, and it has a low fixed interest rate. So um, these are, you know, um, amounts that you would be missing out on if you choose to not um, apply with your parents information. Um, secondly, um, making sure that you're keeping up with um, your my UCLA documents, you, you, sh you should be getting like automated emails if you have not submitted them. Um, but it's basically through my UCLA, which is where um, you can like accept your housing offers, you accepted your admissions offer there. Um, so this is the same area, you'll just go under finances and view all documents. Um, and here is where you can see what is requested of you. Um, and you can stay in contact with Connie as well if you have any questions about these. I know when I was um, trying to get all of my documents in, one of the ones that was just giving me a headache was the non-filers verification, um, just because I did not file for that year, which was 2018. Now it will be 2019. So if you're also um, having problems with that, I know it took, it, it was a headache for a lot of people in my class as well. Um, but essentially for me, the fastest way that I re uh, re uh, retrieved that was making an appointment in person with the IRS. Um, and I was able to uh, um, retrieve that paper. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out um, to me or Connie and they can help you out with that as well. Um, and then the DIA, those are the dental institutional applications. There's one for students and parents. Um, and then the third step would just be once you've submitted your FAFSA, once you've submitted the required documentation, you would just wait um, until you receive an email of your award financial aid package um, being released. And then um, again, through my UCLA, you can go and view that um, and then accept or decline um, whatever is offered to you in your financial aid package. Um, and then also making sure to set up uh, your direct deposit um, because I think uh, it could be like sent through check, but I think it's just a lot more uh, convenient if you just set up your um, direct um, deposit so that it could just come straight to your account like a few days before school starts. 
Um, and then I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of an explanation of all the different types of financial aid that you could be presented with. Um, and I know that it can be kind of confusing, especially um, when you see words like unsubsidized and subsidized. So um, first I wanted to talk about um, anything related to like grants and scholarship, which is free money basically. Um, UCLA does offer the Dean Scholarship um, and that is merit-based. Um, so if you are offered that, yeah, it's just free money. Um, the dentistry grant is, um, like I said, I already mentioned that it is need-based as well, but you only qualify if you submitted your parents' information through the FAFSA for, um, application. Um, and then just, I don't know much about these, um, but there is the NHSC, National Health Service Corps, um, which is a federally fund, funded um, program, which basically they support you throughout dental school and then you serve in a um, like a low health professional service area. Um, there's a lot that goes into that and you guys can definitely look into that um, through their website online. Um, just with the easy, easy search of their name. Um, and then the HPSP, which is um, a military scholarship. Um, and that as well has a lot of breadth of information within that. So if you guys want to go into the website for HPSP and then learn more about that, um, that's an awesome option as well. And I think we have maybe like one or two people in our class that have that. So um, pretty cool. Um, and then lastly, the more popular ones that mostly everybody will have is the direct unsubsidized loan and then the direct plus subsidized loan. And so essentially what it is, is that um, the direct unsubsidized loan um, is a fixed low interest rate loan. Um, and then you won't have to start making payments on it until like about six months until after you graduate. Um, this loan does begin to um, accrue interest um, from the start of the disbursement. Um, and it is a lower interest rate than the um, subs, the grad plus subsidized loan, um, which that one is at about like a 5.3 for last year. I'm not sure if maybe the percent will get higher or lower next year, but um, it, it is subject to change. And um, if you guys can go to the next slide, please. Um, and then this is um, a guide that you can find through this website that I highlighted here. It's through the financial aid website for UCLA. Um, and they do have a, um, a student loan guide. It's about three pages long, but they have a better explanation for all of the different types of financial aid options that you can choose to finance your education. Um, so that's a really useful um, source for you to understand and, you know, choose how you want to go about financing once you do receive your financial aid package. Next page, please. Um, and then this is just kind of a breakdown, just, you know, there's, there's these like major costs that you will encounter throughout your first year. Um, so I kind of listed it out here. I don't want to go like too in, into detail um, with it, but as you can see the highlighted and bolded um, parts which is like your tuition. Um, and then that is separate from your dental kit. Um, and then, like I said, the, like Brad was explaining the dental kit, you know, you have various options on how to pay for that. Um, and definitely your loans can cover that or however you wanna choose to go about that. Um, and then cost of housing, um, I guess I kind of like went a little higher there. You, you definitely can find lower, especially if you go into like studios or through the um, UCLA um, housing on their campus. Um, and then cost of living, you know, it's really just up to you and how you budget and what you're left with. Um, and then loops, um, that's also a mandatory purchase. And depending on the company you go with, I went with Q Optics. And so that's why I kind of put Q Optics options here. The cheapest that you can get is about 900 and you could get as expensive as 2K. So um, really up to you. Um, and yeah, so take a look at that if you guys um, want to get some more information on that. All right, so I'm going to be talking about the D1 class schedule. And so if you guys didn't already know, UCLA is on the quarter system. So that means 
each quarter is set out to be 10 weeks of uh, information and stuff. And then afterwards, you'll have one week of finals. And then we go pretty much year round. So after this summer, you probably won't have a, a free summer. Um, you might have a couple of weeks, um, but that's pretty much it. So take advantage of this summer. But for the fall, uh, here are the listed courses that uh, you'll be enrolled in. And so you have about eight courses and each of these change uh, throughout the quarter um, or from quarter to quarter. There might be some that might be a continuation of the sequence. So for example, um, the middle one there, Foundations of Basic Science, um, you'll have a continuation, um, a second part to it. So there's that. Um, the ones that are highlighted in red, so you'll notice gross anatomy and applied anatomy waxing, those ones are your lab courses uh, that you'll be enrolled in. So for us, all of our other courses were online uh, because of COVID. And then we had these two classes in person and we had to go into the lab and stuff. So it was nice to meet our classmates that way and you know spend time with one another. And then also you'll notice that some courses have asterisks and those ones are probably ones that you probably want to pay a little bit more attention to. Uh, they're a little bit more challenging and, and uh, difficult. So uh, we think that maybe you should cater a little bit more of your time towards these courses. And just to give you a heads up um, for those. And so here is the, here's an example from like week four in October. And so you can see um, kind of just the listed courses Hopefully it's not too, uh, too pale for you guys to uh, see it, but um, there are ones that are highlighted or outlined in orange, like yellow. And so these ones are separate from your established course calendar. Oh, by the way, your course calendar is online uh, or it will be online. Um, I don't think it's up yet, I checked already, but um, yeah, it's the, the orange ones are separate from your established course calendar and um, they're not, like mandatory, I guess. Um, and so this take initiative to sign up for. So you'll notice that the first one on the left, it says uh, on the top says anatomy after hours. And so for your anatomy lab, um, I don't know if things will change, but we had to have at least three signups, um, three sessions outside of the mandatory class period. So there's already a gross anatomy lab that I had both on Monday and Friday or Monday and Wednesday. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are all just sessions that I signed up for on my own. So you can kind of, uh, you know, sign up for how, however many you want. It's just for you to be able to go into the lab and practice identifying uh, certain features um, and things like that. So uh, that's really important. And then also you'll notice that there is a, a fourth floor lab. Uh, extra hours and that's on Friday that I have listed there and so for that one um, it's just again more practice to uh, wax and the fourth floor lab is where the preclinical uh, sim lab or whatever you want to call it that's where it's located um, it's great because a lot of these things or the fourth floor is open pretty much 24 7 uh, you can go in and badge in and it's available for you. Um, the anatomy lab is a little bit limited um, in terms of time, I think. So we, we'll, you'll, you'll get more information once you, the course starts. And then on Tuesday, the last thing I have there is just a Spanish selective. And that's just uh, another thing that I took on during the fall quarter. Um, it's not mandatory, but just to give you guys a little bit of a glimpse as to what things uh, we were involved in. Not everyone has to do it. It's just if you if you're interested. Yeah, and then to go back onto the thing about summer, um, if you look at like the dental school schedule, it lists like D one year and then D two summer, and so that can be kind of confusing. But D two summer is right after D one year, so we actually don't get any summer breaks. Sorry, guys. All right, next. Yeah, sad times, but. Um, yeah, this slide is just to uh, give you guys a heads up to start collecting teeth. And um, it's great, you know, if you're working in a clinic or an office right now, you can go ahead and get started. Um, but yeah, the process that you're going to want to follow is to uh, clean all the extracted teeth of the blood and the tissue and all that stuff. And you put it, put them into a jar and you want to have, uh, you know, 
uh, a ratio between bleach and water. So you're gonna have one part bleach to 10 parts water. And then once you're done with the jar, you can transport it in a sealable bag, like a Ziploc or something. And then, um, you know, if you're not in, you know, involved with a clinic or an office right now, you can go and contact um, specifically oral surgeons because they're gonna have a lot of extracted teeth. And um, you can just ask them like, hey, my name is da da da, and I'm going to dental school at UCLA, and I need to collect some teeth. Do you mind um, just putting placing them in the jar, um, and then have your name on the jar and your maybe your phone number or contact information or something? Um, that would be really helpful for you. Um, and you know, you don't have to have all these teeth ready by fall quarter of D1. Uh, we actually haven't even used any uh, of these extracted teeth, so I think it's more of D2 year. Um, that you'll be utilizing these things and yeah, maybe they can speak on what type of teeth or uh, how many teeth. Do you guys have any input for that? Yeah, so you need most of these teeth for endo or the ones that like, and usually it's like teeth that have straight roots, but honestly just collect as many as you can because you go through a lot of like teeth that don't work. Um, so a lot of molars, Definitely try to collect some anterior teeth. Um, but yeah, just collect as many as you can. Yeah, it's kind of hard to screen them right now when you're not really sure what you're looking for. But as Alexa said, just collect as much as you can and you can screen them later. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about clubs and how to get involved here at UCLA School of Dentistry. So at the beginning of the year, you're gonna have a club fair. Ours was virtual. I'm not sure how yours is gonna be just depending on COVID. Um, but either way, it's just an opportunity for you guys to go and like get to know all of these different organizations and what they stand for, the types of events that they put on and see where you would fit in and what you want to um, join. So basically we have a ton of clubs here on campus. We have student culture, academic slash study clubs. If you could go on to the next slide, there's also like service clubs and um, fraternities that you can join. I'm not gonna like read through all of them obviously, but they're listed there for you um, to see maybe which ones you would want to participate in once you get here. Um, and then if you could go on to the next slide. There is also ASDA. So ASDA is the American Student Dental Association. And basically there is a chapter at, I believe every school. Um, and they're just an organization that basically like has a lot to do with leadership and like advocating for us as dental students. And within ASDA, there's a bunch of different committees that you can join. Um, such as the Pre-Dental Outreach Committee, shout out to all of us, <laughs> the best committee, <laughs> not biased or anything. <laughs> um, but anyway, so there's a bunch of opportunities to get involved there and just gain like leadership experience. I know uh, with ASDA, there's a lot of like room for growth because you could gain like a committee um, position and be involved at like the school level and then like district level, state level and like so on. And I don't know if like anybody else has any input on ASDA. Hence, yeah, totally. Brad, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, Melody covered it pretty well. Um, I mean, overall, like I, I just highly recommend that you guys get involved in ASDA. Um, oftentimes it's also as good as you, like, like you get out of it, like also what you put into it. So, you know, they have like a whole bunch of different conferences throughout the year. You know, you have um, like the D11 conference, you have a annual session, um uh national leadership conference um another one oh lobby day is another thing that i did which was awesome anyway so a lot of different conferences now these conferences you learn like leadership skills you might learn uh there might be a, a section on on the basis of um you know how to run a practice like the business side of dentistry like things you don't exactly get in the classroom you know here at ucla or actually even really at many other dental schools so it's similar to, like you guys have heard of the ada it's, um, it's, it's like a student version of that. And we actually work closely with them as well. Um, and like, it, it's like, it's for me, like, I like doing pre-dental stuff and I like doing advocacy. So I like, you know, paying it forward to the pre-dents, right? Cause that's how I learned all about dentistry and dental school um, was through ASDA. And then for advocacy, it's like, you know, we fight for the rights of 
dentists as well as like dental students. So in lobby day, for example, like I was with dentists and other dental students and we were talking to um, Congress, Congress, uh, members of Congress about like student debt, for example. So it's, you, it's, it's a chance to really be highly influential. Um, if that's something you're pas passionate about, but also, like I said, if you want to like, you know, learn more about like the business side of the industry, how to be a good leader, um, you know, it's uh, like kind of like similar to C CE courses, but not exactly CE courses, um, you know, stuff like that, then I think this is a really good opportunity for you. And um, yeah, I highly recommend that you all join. That's all I got. That was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so these clubs are just like a really good way to meet people with similar interests, especially like when you're first incoming. I know it can be kind of hard to meet people and make those connections. So joining these, these clubs would be a good way to do that. And then also you could get involved with like different service events. I know a lot of the clubs put on um, different ways to like give back to the community. So if you are interested in that, that's also a really good way to like give back. Um, and then as we've already covered, you could gain leadership experience uh, with these clubs. And if you attend different events and lunch and learns, you could also sometimes gain selective units. So at UCLA, we have these things called selective units. And basically they are courses slash events um, that you participate in that give you credit uh, towards like graduation and we need to fulfill a certain number of these credits before we graduate. And it's just like UCLA's way of having us learn outside of the classroom. Um, and then also just like attending these events and getting involved in clubs are just great ways to learn about the different aspects of dentistry and like different specialties and find out if that's where your passion lies. Um, and it's also a good way to just like get information if you're thinking about applying to residencies in the future. I know a lot of the different clubs like are really helpful with that. But yeah. All right, hi everyone. So I'm gonna be talking about student life and the D1 experience and hopefully assuage any concerns that you guys may have about managing that work-life balance in dental school. So you'll get eased into classes first year for sure, but in general, dental school is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, compared to undergrad, there's always a quiz or a project or a midterm on the horizon. You're, it's a lot of go, go, go. Um, it's exciting. It's a little overwhelming sometimes, but it's absolutely manageable. And in terms of what your day-to-day -day would look like, we were mostly virtual with a couple in-person labs. I honestly don't know what things are gonna look like in the fall or how your schedule is gonna differ from ours, but regardless of how things are set up, it's all about time management. I know that's something that you guys are all well-versed in at this point if you've gotten this far, but dental school really takes it up a notch. So try to be efficient with your study time and your time that you're in lab. The more efficient you are, the quicker your overall study time is, and the more time you have for fun things and other opportunities. And then also take advantage of the collaborative atmosphere that we have here. I don't know what your undergrad environment was like or if it was competitive or cutthroat or anything like that, um, but I'm here to tell you that that is not the case anymore. Those days are done and it is so collaborative here. It's pass no pass honors grading. If you didn't know that already, I don't know. Um, our class is constantly sharing information, tips, study guides, quizlets, and Ethan will talk more about this later, but our class group chat, at least for me, has been an absolute lifesaver. And no matter what, it's going to feel daunting, but I just wanna say that you guys are all capable of more than you know. I remember anatomy fall quarter, looking at that cranial nerves lecture and being, wow, look at all this stuff that we're going to be expected to know at some point coming soon. And then the first time we drilled in direct lab and then the first time in the mannequin and then in the first time indirect vision in the mannequin, like dental school is gonna keep raising the stakes and it's going to be hard to imagine that you're gonna know this stuff at some point, but I promise you, you will. 
um, in just one year, you're going to be in our shoes. Some of you might be giving this presentation to the next generation of D1s, and you're going to get to look back at all of these little cool projects that you did in lab and say, yeah, I know how to do this. So yeah, next slide. And that being said, you're going to have good days and bad days in dental school. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Life keeps moving outside of dental school. And so something that I always try to keep in mind, just as advice, is that it's all about attitude in life, but especially in dental school. Try not to stress about the things that are out of your control, because there's a lot of those. Uh, celebrate the little wins. Give yourself some grace when you're struggling. Don't expect to be perfect at everything the first time around. Honestly, don't expect to be perfect the second or third time you do things. Um, a buzzword for Dr. Margolis and for our committee is resilience. So bouncing back from challenges, being okay with making mistakes. So yeah, just try to have a good attitude about things. And at least for me, it makes things a lot easier. And take care of yourself, however that looks for you. Honestly, if the seven of us were to give a presentation about student life and how to take care of yourselves, we give seven different presentations. So do whatever works for you. Everyone's different. In two years, you're gonna be taking care of patients, which is wild, but you need to know how to take care of yourself before you can take care of other people. And lean on this community for support. SOD stands for School of Dentistry, in case you didn't know that already. But us upperclassmen are here to help. At least for me personally, I feel like the faculty have taught me the foundations of things, but it's been the upperclassmen who have taught me the tips and tricks and like the ins and outs, the little secrets that you're supposed to know, but don't know somehow. And at some point during orientation week or before orientation week, we're gonna pair you guys with a D2. You'll have a big little pairing. At some point this summer, you'll get a survey that's about your interests, um, what you're looking for in a big, hobbies, where you're from, if you're thinking about specializing. And it's really just how involved you wanna be. It's totally up to you. I love my big, she's amazing. She basically taught me how to drill, but I also have friends who aren't particularly close with theirs. So totally up to you, you do you. And then like Melanie mentioned earlier, there are so many opportunities in dental school and so much more to the experience than just trying to get honors. And dental school is what you make it. You'll get out of it what you put into it and you're gonna get an abundance of information about different ways to get involved uh, during orientation week and throughout fall quarter. But two things that are gonna come up a little bit earlier in fall quarter, maybe mid fall quarter, that I at least wanted to mention are class cabinet and class representative positions. There are 18 positions in class cabinet. It's president, vice presidents, social chairs, ASDA reps, student equipment, IM sports, there's a lot and I'm not gonna list it, but um, it's not for everyone. I've really enjoyed being on it, but just some food for thought. And then most of the clubs and definitely the study clubs for sure have a class representative position. So you're the D1 rep for that club. I'm not a D1 rep, so I really don't know what that means. But if there's a specific club that you're especially interested in, maybe think about it. I don't know, up to you. Uh, next slide. And then speaking of getting involved, a little quick blurb about recreation and intramurals here at UCLA. Uh, they opened up stuff this quarter, which is fun. There's cornhole, double tennis, spike ball, virtual 5K, 10K. Hopefully the full roster of sports will open up soon. Other than that, there's a lot of rec classes from portrait drawing to MMA. So that, that's a spectrum, which is good. And then the Kinross Rec Center is a gym specifically for grad students that is really close to Weyburn. And I think it's opening next week up again. But other than that, there's pools and tennis courts, grass lawns, Drake Track Stadium. Those are at least the things that are open now, but they're open on a reservation basis. So yeah, lots of opportunities to be active. And then to finish up, um, if you hear us say this once, you're probably gonna hear us say this a million times, 
but please remember that you're a person first and a dental student second. I know some days that's going to be a harder balance to achieve than others, but just try to keep that mindset no matter what is going on. Please make time for hobbies and family and friends and do the things you love no matter how, how busy things are and take advantage of the all that LA has to offer on the weekends. It's been a really good place to have study breaks. Um, this is a sunset photo at Santa Monica Beach. That was a nice study break. There's a lot of hikes, the Hollywood hike. I don't know what this other hike is, but there's a lot of them around UCLA. And then there's really great food scenes, happy hours, cute little cafes. And then I think museums are opening up again. There's a lot of arts. Uh, sporting events soon, which is exciting. Go Bruins, yay. Um, and then this is Mammoth. Mammoth and Big Bear are decently close, maybe a day trip, weekend trip kind of thing. Obviously this winter looked a little different in terms of class trips, but super excited for next winter. And yeah, that's it. So have fun this summer, spend time with your loved ones, take care of yourself and be ready to rock and roll come September, yeah. Dude, Jackie, you are like the most amazing cheerleader, pep squad person, whatever you need, guys, go to Jackie to find some inspiration and motivation. Bring the energy. Yeah. Just <laughs> roll with dental school. That's all I got to say. That's what we need. Okay. So lastly, um, yeah, I'm just going to talk about some communication stuff. So uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple of the... Um, platforms that you guys can use. So obviously Facebook exists and, oh, there we go. <laughs> Facebook exists. Um, and then GroupMe, if you guys didn't know, um, your class has a GroupMe page or, you know, chat set up already. So you can follow the QR code and um, get in on that if you guys want. Um, but I think the most important is probably Slack. Uh, Slack is what the D2s use. Um, the current D2s and our class uses GroupMe a lot. We don't really use Slack, but I think it's actually a, probably a good thing that you, if you guys start that Slack and, or not start it, we started it for you. So all you have to do is just click the link and follow that. Um, but uh, utilize that because it's a good way to divide up topics and information according, you know, to like uh, financial aid or housing or, you know, just, a lot easier to find information as well. Um, and you guys can create more channels. Um, yeah, it's just really nice to have everything more organized. With GroupMe, it's a little bit hard. Everything kind of gets congested. And so, um, you know, I think Slack is probably the best thing for you guys to uh, utilize. So maybe someone can uh, tell all your other classmates um, how great it is. But, um, I guess, yeah, just to hop off of what Jackie was saying, it's really nice when everyone is contributing and helping each other out, like letting each other know when, oh, like we have a quiz in like five minutes or don't forget to do this assignment due at midnight and stuff like that. I know for me, it's, it's hard to keep track of everything that's going on, especially when you have a lot of extracurriculars or uh, you're going into lab a lot or something like that. So it's really helpful. And then uh, I know we didn't add it, but we also have a google drive where we have like um study guides and other materials that people share with one another um and so you guys can create that as well um it's a good way to share resources all right guys so that's the end of our presentation so i know we've been kind of answering questions in the chat throughout but if anyone else has any remaining questions you can go ahead and unmute yourself or pop it in the chat but yeah to go back on the slack thing so the difference between group me and slack is um group me is just kind of like one long chat and it's like if you are searching for like one topic of conversation you have to like scroll like super far up but slack is nice because it's like um divided into like different channels so alexa and i um, use slack a lot and um there's like a study channel so people will post like their study guides and their reminders on like when an assignment is due um or there's like a clinic channel so anything um, relating to 
to clinic, like when we have to be in clinic, like where do we find things in clinic, we post in that channel. So it's just nice and organized. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna stop uh, the recording now and then we can just answer questions. Okay, if I can figure out how to do this. Oh, stop recording.